just so unbearable like emotionally for me to be exposed to it that it would like bring on a headache but I would almost get like instant headaches as a kid quite often and thankfully I don't really get headaches much anymore and I don't get migraines and another thing is back then and to to this day I have a very heightened sense of smell like I can smell everything and anything and I'm always like asking people if they could smell that and they always say no almost always so very heightened senses um three is taste so very picky eater and not just you know everyone had their things they didn't like when they when they were young but for me it was like certain textures and appearance like meat especially when things were left like the bones and everything um water tasted metallic to like water has a different taste no matter where you go things like that um and you know I think one of the reasons I kind of was forced to get over some of my um eating habits is because of the lack of nutrition the food insecurity at times so I kind of like out of starvation and hunger I would just eat whatever was there at times but there was definitely earlier on I refused I'd rather go to bed hungry than eat what was available so yeah that's something um for hearing so people would say I had selective hearing um, loud sounds would be really upsetting like I'd have to cover my ears and with hearing I could not make out the words and songs a lot I don't know what kind of disorder that is I haven't really looked into it but I just I don't know if it's because it's more so music I've listened to on the radio from a young age and it's like there's a muffle or there's a, like a little bit of an electric sound like you know how autistic people can sometimes hear like rate like um hear electricity and people are like what <laughs> so I think that just interfered with but I don't know it's even more than that it's more severe than that I really don't know how to explain it, but I could honestly tell you I've heard songs hundreds of times, even songs I'm not fond of, like just on the radio or whatever, and I do not know all the words. I just simply cannot hear them, so I don't know what that really has to do with, but it has to do with hearing. Um, I cannot focus in loud rooms, especially when I was younger. Like, you know, even during exams, it would be pretty painful. I probably could have benefited from doing exams in a different room but the sound of like papers rustling and pens tapping and people tapping their foot and just anything like that was like took me a lot longer to do my work um five is vision so thankfully I've always had 2020 vision one eye is actually a little bit worse now Okay, so thankfully, um, <laughs> like I have good vision, but I have two astigmatisms, I was told. So God, <laughs> like it's really crazy, but I actually have a million diagnoses, like truthfully, <laughs> just really faulty DNA, <laughs> DNA in this one. But anyway, <laughs> I'm sure we all have some, but it's just like, wow, <laughs> the more as I've gotten older and because I went, I was in denial about, a, well, all of my issues until my late 20s, until I just like couldn't handle it anymore and had like a mental breakdown and reached out for help for the first time. So if you feel like you're struggling and you're not where you are with, you know, you're not at the same level as your peers, there's no shame in it. Just like reach out for help. Don't wait until your late 20s to get help and learn self-love and self-acceptance um it's just made such a huge difference in how I see myself and how I can help myself and help others around me because you know when I know that I'm experiencing sensory overload or I feel like I'm gonna have a meltdown like I can I don't have to like lash out like I don't 
I'll still get irritable, but I'll just like remove myself from situations instead of being as moody. Like I just know that I have to kind of prioritize myself more and not feel so much guilt and shame about it. But um, back to vision. So eye contact has always been a problem. Like even making these videos, I should be looking at the camera the whole time. <laughs> but I just cannot. Um, well, first of all, I'm looking at a beautiful sight. But with people, like I tend to kind of glance. Like sometimes I can do the opposite and I'm like staring too much. But probably 90% of the time I'm not really looking at people right in the eyes like it's just a very uncomfortable feeling I don't know what it is it's like they can see into my soul or I can see into theirs or I don't know um and light I used to have a really bad well now I usually wear sunglasses all the time but um I used to have really bad light sensitivity, like my eyes were just watering all the time. And so it sucks when you're wearing makeup and stuff in your, and then your makeup gets in your eyes, so it makes it even worse. But oddly enough, like as watery as my eyes used to be back then, now I feel like I experience the opposite where they're kind of dry. It's like all my tears I've used up. <sighs> Next is, um, six is mannerisms so I don't know I don't know if I've what the link is exactly but I do things that a lot of autistic people identify with like t-rex arms like standing near there like this and broken wrist syndrome like constantly resting my hand on my wrist like this like even like sleeping on it like that um I don't know if broken wrist syndrome is an actual diagnosis or if it's just what people call it, but that's something I definitely do. And speaking a lot with my hands. I mean, right now one hand is on with the paper and the other hand is free to do things, but normally I'd be talking with both hands a lot. Um, this happened a little bit after childhood, but one of my first jobs as a server I noticed because I was always doing things with my hands all the time and have really bad habits with my hands when I had this job and it was going from you know the, to take care of the customers needs to go to the back in the kitchen I'd be walking back and forth like doing this with my hand and it's something I noticed about myself for the first time that I thought was unusual and I'm like okay, what is wrong and why am I doing that? And I looked it up and it, I thought it was alien hand syndrome. <laughs> like you don't have control over it. But now I can clearly see that I was stimming because it's like a loud environment. It's like the stress of taking care of everyone's needs. Um, I really don't recommend serving for autistic people. But on the other hand, like if you are an it did bring me out of my comfort zone and it brought my communication levels up many levels the years that I was doing that. And it was supposed to be a temporary job, but it kind of led into like probably four or five years worth of working as a server because the tips, like I liked having the money daily, which was nice. Um, but it was very harmful in a lot of ways, which I've mentioned before. Seven is stance. So I tend to, especially as a kid, I would stand on like the outside of my foot when I'm just waiting around, whether it be for the bus. And another thing is I would have trouble standing still, like whether I'm on the phone or waiting for the bus or just standing in line and like pacing, pacing or else standing on one foot to the other like things like that it's kind of like it's a stim which I realize I have a lot of stims and stimming for me is as I see it now is like a release of energy like it's physically uncomfortable to stand there just so still or sit there still and now I can kind of see it I'm like hmm well I wonder if that's why 
I have pain, so much pain when you're constantly moving and you're not allowing your body to rest.